What's up, friends? So today we're going to be working on another still life. So keep in mind that for us, a still life is going to be between three to five objects. Things like food, dishes, plants, toys, clothes, bones, etc., etc., etc. Things that cannot move on their own. Now, this still life, we're going to be using ink. So that could be a Sharpie. It could be a regular Crayola marker. It could be a ballpoint pen. Any kind of ink. Now, just because we're going to be using ink as the finishing doesn't mean we have to start with ink. Now, if you want to go in and, and, and try to give this a go with ink, you're a brave soul, and I commend you for your bravery. Um, get after it. However, if you want to give yourself the opportunity to make mistakes and some changes and some corrections, then we can start with a pencil and then move to the ink when we're done. Now, a few things stay the same. We still want to pick our objects. I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to use this bowl and these two pieces of fruit. Um, we still want to make sure that when we set it down, we make sure that um, once we put it down, we don't move it. We keep it, we keep it still. And we want to make sure that when we start drawing, we start drawing with the thing that has nothing overlapping. It has nothing in front of it. Um, I'm going to need to add another object to my still life in order to make that possible. Let's let's put a let's put old Yorick in the shot. Goodness gracious, he is buzzed in. Well, maybe not Yorick. So we want to start drawing with the thing that doesn't have any overlap, the thing that doesn't have anything else in front of it. Now, again, you can start off with a marker if you want to. I'm going to start off with a pencil. And I'm going to speed the camera up through the drawing part. All right, so here we have the, the rough end, the, the basics of the drawing. So from here, what we want to do is we want to hit it with an outline. And then after the outline, we want to go in with an eraser and take out any extra stray marks that we might happen to have left over from the drawing. Um, remember when we outline, we're not drawing anything new. We're just going over what's already there. And then we'll be free, and then we'll be ready to start the process of shading this using that cross-hatching technique that we've been talking about. Um, so keep in mind when you start your shading with your cross hatching, uh, we want to start with our lines far apart, and then every time we add a layer to it, our hatch marks should get a little bit closer together, and they should get a little bit shorter so that they cover a little bit less of the space. Okay. That being said, again, I'm going to speed up the camera so as to not use a bunch of our time just watching me do stuff. <laughs> 